Welcome to Bomby Spirit episode two. I know it's been a while since I've done an episode for Bomby Spirit. Uh, every time I thought about a topic to do, I would be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do it. And then things would change. And I wanted the episodes to stay relevant to what was going on at the time. And so, you know, a lot of shit kept changing, shifting all the time. <laughs> a lot of shifts have happened in the last couple of months. And not to mention, I also found, realized that the editing process was very painful painful to say the least for me to do uh i am not that person that can sit there on a computer and deal with technology in that kind of a painstaking way it was literally making me insane and it became a block for me from doing more episodes so i was like you know what i'm just not gonna edit anymore problem solved there you go that's how you remove obstacles oh that's an obstacle and i'm just and i really can't get past it i just oh it's not a problem anymore <laughs> I just won't do it. That's it. I just won't do it. Um, anyway, so moving forward, the episodes will no longer be edited. It will just be a long running video of me talking about cer certain topics. Now, people wanted me to do an episode on uh, the what I talked about in the live video I posted a couple of days ago on YouTube, the one that's labeled the Dream Space Experience and Cancer SOS. Cancer SOS doesn't apply here. Um, but the Dream Space Experience I had, I think, was very telling of what may may be happening I say may because things, you know, shit changes all the time. It's the fun roller coaster of the game that we're on. Shit changes all the time. Uh, but I think, you know, we can definitely talk about what's going on right now. But I don't, I'll be honest, I'm kind of tired of talking about the shit that's going on. I'm really tired of it. I know you guys are kind of tired of it. But I think that there's some cool little lessons in there as far as like timelines, how to choose a timeline, how to get off a timeline, manifesting your reality and manifesting the existence that you really want for yourself, right? And what happens when a collective does that? Uh, on a massive scale, what can happen, right? Um, and I think Atlantis is a good example of that. We started talking about Atlantis in that live video, and it's like that, and it's so crazy how that came about, and it was like, oh, epiphany, oh, epiphany, oh, epiphany. <laughs> Streaming downloads, right? Uh, so we can talk about that a little bit, but let's get into timelines, right? <clears throat> oh, and there I go. Hold on, let me get some tea. Mm. So timelines. Timelines are really interesting. Um, you know, I think sometimes it can sound more complicated than it really is. So when we talk about manifesting your existence, that ties directly into timelines, okay? The way we manifest our existence, it's what is going on within us and what we keep thinking about, what we keep talking about. The energy we're constantly working with and creating within our being manifests externally, creating not only the reality we're on, but the the timeline that we're on of, for, with the same people of that same frequency, okay? So basically, if everyone's in a fearful state frequency, pretty much ride in that timeline of fear, right? Whatever's coming with that and whatever you want to manifest in reality out of fear. Uh, I'm so afraid I'm going to get robbed. I get robbed. Like, you know, things like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that people who get robbed wanted to. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Okay. Just a really crude example. Really crude example. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh shit, yeah, I did not mean to say it like that. And I don't mean it that way. Anyway, so with timelines. So if you want to get off a timeline where you're engaging in a really horrible habit or you're around certain people, or like, let's say you're stuck at a, at a job with a really hostile environment. You're like, how do I like, and you want to get out of that timeline where that just seems to be your existence, you literally just start internally with that process. The process of, of having a higher vibe uh, work environment, having a higher vibe job. Sometimes you can just transmute the energy in your work environment. I've seen it happen. I've also done that. Like sometimes people are just that powerful. They can just transmute energy around them that way. Not everybody can though. But anyway, so that's where you start, right? It's like, okay, what do I want out of my work environment? What do I want externally? I'm just going to tell myself I have that. I'm just going to act like I have that. I'm going to act like I'm in that, right? And sooner, ra sooner rather than later, the quicker you do that, the faster your environment's not going to resonate with you anymore. So what's going to happen is your environment either has to uh, change and find an equilibrium to you, or you start to remove yourself out of that environment without even realizing it because it doesn't resonate with you anymore, right? And what's resonating with you is attracting to you. So let's say this is the timeline you're on, right? You're in this timeline of a hostile work environment, and you're like, I want off this timeline now. <laughs> now. I want off now. I don't like this. I don't like this. So let's say you're like, okay, I want to be 
at this timeline. I want to be at a timeline where I get support from my, my coworkers. People say hello when I walk into the office. Uh, everybody cleans their dishes in the kitchen, whatever, whatever it is you want, right? And you want to be here, but you've been here. What's going to happen is this environment either has to come up to you to find an equilibrium so that energy can coexist, or what's going to happen is you're literally just going to naturally move away because you're attracting this timeline, right? So you're here and you want to vibe here. You start trying to vibe here. What's going to happen is this is going to start attracting to you. So one or two things are going to happen. You're going to pull in uh, people who are love that vibration, people who want to give you jobs with that kind of work environment because you're exuding that energy or your work environment's going to change to match your needs. Okay, and it's all going to happen very naturally. And you might even re you might not even realize it till like your months in or you get another job and you're like, oh, shit, this is exactly what I wanted. I manifested this. Not only did you manifest it, you jumped to another timeline. Okay, there's a timeline where you're still sitting at this desk in a hostile ass work environment and people are screaming, yelling, whatever. And there's a timeline here where you actually did what you wanted and you're happy in your happy existence. So that's what we mean when we say manifest. That's what we mean when we when we talk about creating your realities and when you jump your timeline. It's all connected in the same way. It's essentially the same thing. Right. So it's really fascinating stuff. Now, as far as the Atlantis conversation. That was really fun. That was really interesting. Uh, I talked about my dream space experience and I'll reiterate it here. It was really interesting. Um, I was on rooftops with people um, and these people and some people were coming in on crafts, which was really kind of cool. I was like, oh, and I've been seeing more and more crafts in the dream space. So I'm like, oh, I'm loving this shit, right? Loving it. So anyway, we're on these rooftops and we're having a good time, but it's like a weird, sad time. It's like a fun, sad time is what it was. It's like very serious energy in the air. But we're on these rooftops, right? And there's like a fog that's like level with the rooftop. And we know there's like bad shit going on beneath the fog. We know it. We just don't know what it is, but we know it's bad. We know it's bad. And I think that awareness is what was making us sad and like serious, but we're having fun at the same time. There was something I left out in the live and I'll mention it here. Uh, one of these individuals approached me and brought up people in my life, like people I knew. So I, I felt like it was someone who actually knew me in this life. They just were in a different form and I didn't recognize them. They actually were very, um, oh, now that I think about it. So, okay, this is going on, going on a little bit of a tangent in this episode. Um, those of you who've been with me for a while understand that I engage a lot with Carrions. And I've seen, the Carrions come in so many different aesthetics. It's really amazing, actually. There's one in particular that has come up a couple times for me. I'm sure there's a specific name out there in, in the, you know, in the cosmos. I just don't know what it is. Uh, it's like part carrion, part humanoid. It's really interesting. And one of them approached me and said, isn't it interesting that blank and blank, like, you know, insert names of people in my life uh, aren't here. And I, I remember going, like, uh, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit they're not here. Like they're not up here with us. And I dawned on me that they were down there, like below in the, in the abyss of clouds that we couldn't even see or perceive. Like we knew that it was bad shit going on. We just couldn't see what was going on. Right. And then people kept coming up to me and telling me it's never going to be the same again. 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 I sorry, I said that really fast. It's never going to be the same again. It's like, Oh shit. Like, oh shit. And it made me realize that there's a big possibility of what is happening is that we're having a major split in like timelines where people are going to be up in these higher dimensions and people are going to be trapped in these lower frequencies. So we'll say frequencies because that's what dimensions are also. It's just energy frequencies, right? And we're all frequency. Anyway, where there, there are going to be people trapped in these lower frequencies who can't perceive the people in the higher frequencies and the people in the higher frequencies can't perceive the people in the lower frequencies, but they know they're there. And there's this weird like divide of cloudiness that like you can't penetrate. And it's like, oh shit, this is weird. This is like, it started to like make me a little nervous, but at the same time kind of excited, right? But also kind of sad because like, well shit, if that's happening, there are gonna be people who, you know, you will no longer perceive. And that does happen when you jump timelines. Going back to timelines really quickly. Because when you jump timelines, you'll notice it like you can't recall certain memories anymore, right? Or like 
you realize you haven't thought about a person in like 10, 15 years, whatever, when they were like your whole life at one point. And even when you try to recall them, it's so hard. You can barely remember what they look like. Sometimes even what their names are, what they sounded like. There's a reason for that because you've jumped so many timelines over that they're not part of your existence. And again, that's what timelines and realities and existence is, right? It's your perception. It's your external manifestation from the internal. So if like, and I use this example, maybe I use this example in the live, maybe I didn't. Really crude example. Let's say you loved Oreos. Let's say you were an Oreo addict when you were a kid or a teenager or whatever. And, you know, 20 years later, you haven't thought about an Oreo in like five or eight years. I mean, you know, whatever. You haven't thought about an Oreo in years. And you go into grocery stores, you don't even see them, right? They're not, Oreos aren't really in your existence because you don't think about them. And if you don't think about them, it's because you're not perceiving them. Does it mean that they're there? Hmm. Answer that question how you how you like. You aren't perceiving it. It's not part of your reality. It's not part of your existence. It doesn't mean it's not there. You just don't perceive it, right? And that's what I, that's what we mean when we talk about manifesting your reality and your existence, and especially when, we, when you start to jump timelines. Now, when a collective starts to get on the same frequency, because there's a whole um, concept of unity consciousness I talk about a lot. Maybe I should have done a video on that. Anyway, um, of unity consciousness. We're all connected. We're all a part of each other, right? And there's evidence of that. Like, how come we can feel what it would what it would be like to experience something we haven't experienced? Because a person that's telling you about their experience is part of you. Because a part of you has gone through that experience, just not this vessel of yours. You understand what I'm saying? Anyway, getting off track. So going back to timelines a little bit here. Um, and I think that's what's going to be happening. That's a very real possibility of what can be happening. I think it's going to be more natural than it sounds. I don't think it's going to be, uh, I don't think it's going to be all of a sudden we can't like see people who are around us. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be a very natural progression. You know what I mean? Um, and we're going to, we're going to see what that looks like, you know, moving forward. Excuse me. But then someone brought up Atlantis in the live when I was talking about this and asking me about the Atlantis wound. And I, and I admitted, I said, you know, I don't talk about Atlantis. <laughs> I don't talk about it. Uh, I've got my own weird block with Atlantis. Can't even tell you what it, I, and, I, and I said it, like I, you can go watch the video. I was like, I can't even tell you what it is. It's just my higher self, a part of me is like, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. I've always felt that with Atlantis, like just don't go there, just don't go there, just don't go there. But you know, I was like, all right, but you know, let's explore that a little bit. And I was like, well, here's what I know about Atlantis. Uh, it imploded. A lot of us got trapped. That's what I know with Atlantis. And again, I'm sure I would know more if I allowed myself to go there, but don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, right? Uh, and then I realized, I was like, oh shit. Atlantis, as far as we know, again, as far as we know, shit changes all the time. Atlantis imploded because of this whole greediness of power. And I've been talking about the false sense of power for a long time now. We're seeing that of what and what's going on but again i don't want to focus on that i want to focus on the good stuff um this false sense of power that needed to fall that needed to come to light in order to fall right and i was realizing that oh this feels a little bit like history repeating itself and i realized what if we weren't really abandoned what if what happened is we really just chose fear and we all jumped on that timeline of fear because we chose it as a collective keeping us trapped in the lower frequencies versus those who didn't and are in the higher frequency and on the timeline where everything was okay, right? Right, that blew my mind when we were like, when we we're, you know, vibing on it, vibing about it on the live chat. I was like, oh shit, I think that's exactly what happened with Atlantis. Again, I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong. But I do think that that might be what happened with Atlantis where we had a major split into timelines where there was enough of the collective to vibe on a fear line timeline and enough of a collective to vibe on a everything is going to be cool we know it's going to be cool fate a timeline of faith so to speak a higher vibe timeline and people were trapped down here and people got to be up here right and then there became this like you can't perceive like barrier came up the clouds that i was talking about and and i even like said it on live i was like why haven't we found atlantis Think about that. Why haven't we found Atlantis? Is it because it's in a dimension that we cannot perceive as a collective? We can probably perceive it individually for those of us who can go to other dimensions, but as a collective, we can't find it because we can't perceive it because we're on that we're not on that frequency or that timeline. 
there may be a day where we will. There may be a day where enough of the collective can shift to that frequency like as a mass collective. I'm not just talking about a few thousand people. Okay, I'm talking about like mat, like millions. I'm talking like millions. I don't know, hundreds of millions. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, can't think of a number. I'm not talking about a small group of the collective. I mean like a big fat chunk, a big fat chunk of the collective to vibe on such a high enough frequency that we can all actually perceive it. You know what I mean? I do think at one point that there may be that day, there may be that time where enough of us are on that frequency that we can say, oh my God, we found Atlantis. It was there the whole time. <laughs> we were just on a low frequency and just couldn't perceive it, right? So it's interesting. So anyway, to close, so that was a little discussion about timelines, how to shift your, ex your experience, your existence, how to jump a timeline. Again, if you don't like something about a timeline that you're on, you literally just start dismantling it. You start dismantling it or you start taking on the energy of what it is you actually want. And a lot of people will tell me, I feel like I'm messing up my manifestation. Why can't I manifest? Why can't I do this? Honestly, guys, when it comes to manifestation, it just comes down to do you actually want it? And I found that that's actually the case. And that's kind of a hard pill for some people to swallow sometimes. You know, some people will say, I'm trying to think of a really crude example. Um... That they want a certain job or a certain income or whatever, a certain, a certain status, a certain way of life. Uh, to get a certain way of life, it takes a certain thing, right? It takes a certain amount of things to fall into place to have a certain lifestyle or to make a certain income. Then that usually comes with responsibility. And I talk about that when we get the Ten of Pentacles, right, in my readings. Ten of Pentacles comes with responsibility because it's a lot to handle. It's a lot to maintain. It's a lot to manage. And at the end of the day, some people don't realize that they're not... Um, taking on that energy of having that responsibility and maturity to have those kinds of things, right? And all it comes down to is how much do you really want it, right? Because um, if you want something, you just do it. Like that's, that's always been my experience and my observation with people is if you truly want something, not talking about people, not talking about wanting someone because there's two free wills involved in that and that's a whole other topic. But if you truly want something, there should be nothing really stopping you from getting it, right? Unless your higher self is in disagreement where your higher self is like, um, you know, this really isn't in your highest good. And a part of you would feel that because a part of you would not be pursuing that 100% because your higher self's like, nope, that sounds fun. It ain't going to be fun, right? <laughs> um, or you want something, but you're not putting in like, how do I say it? How do I say it? It's like, you're just not going for 100%. And I hate to sound like sound all, you know, I know some people are taking this. How do I say this? Some people are taking this like, you're just not working hard enough. No, it's not about working hard enough. It's about stepping into it. It's about stepping into it and the responsibility that comes with whatever it is you're trying to manifest, right? And it could also be because you have blocks. It could be. That totally could be a valid reason as to why you can't manifest something or why you can't step into something fully. You could have emotional blockages that are keeping you from that. Fear could come up and keep you from that. Fear kills a lot of things, guys. Fear is Fear kills a lot of things. Uh, if you have fear about anything, that's always going to hold you back. That's always going to um, halt or delay your manifestations if you have fear about something, okay? Um, or like I said, emotional blocks, wounds, ego, all of that can slow or delay your manifestation. So if you're having trouble manifesting, I would sit down and have a check-in with yourself on why you can't manifest whatever it is you're manifesting and be really honest with yourself. Be real with yourself about it. Like what part of you is wanting to hold on to that? What part of you, like to hold on to the part of your existence you don't like or that you feel is you're uncomfortable with? What part of you isn't going for the thing you really want? Uh, what kind of doubts are there? Are you scared? Are you afraid? Are, do you have anxiety? And it's okay to be honest with yourself. We're all human. I, I get that way too. Sometimes I'm like, I want to manifest this. I'm like, all right, something's going on because I can't manifest it. <laughs> So I sit down with myself and I'm like, why can't I manifest this shit? What's going on? And I just, I'm just honest with myself about the things that are getting in my way. The only reason we can't manifest is because something is getting the, in the way within ourselves, within ourselves, 
That's the only reason we can't manifest something. That is the only reason. It just comes in a lot of different flavors. But anyway, so that's a quick little rundown on manifestations, timelines, creating your reality, and a little bit on Atlantis and relating to kind of what's going on right now without talking about what's going on right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys want to hear about any other topics, please feel free to email me. Like I said, I like to keep them relevant to what's going on. Uh, you know, with the collective. So we'll see how things go. I expect to be more change in April. I feel like change, April, <laughs> I feel like April's gonna bring a lot of change. May is gonna bring a lot of change too. May is gonna be a huge, huge, huge pivot. So that's gonna be fascinating. But anyway, I'm gonna go and I'll see you guys later. Uh, don't forget to check out Vimeo and Patreon and I hope you guys have a really good night. Namaste.